Uh, I'm Mike Stonke. I'm the Vice President of Engineering at Flox. We are a startup that is trying to solve portable developer environment problems. Uh, I'm not going to talk about much of that in this talk, but if you want to check us out, flox.dev, we launched our product on Wednesday. So you could be like in the first 48 hours if you really want to be. Uh, so in my career, I worked in big enterprise, and then I went to startups that primarily did developer and operational tooling. So I've been in this space for We'll, we'll call it 15 years at least, and I was definitely doing some of that stuff at Caterpillar as well. Uh, in the last year, I went to Flox after I was at Puppet and Circle CI. So I'm going to talk about experiences from all of these places and how I've worked with engineers and executive teams to justify investments that people are making. Uh, one of the things that I did when I was at Puppet was I worked on the state of DevOps reports. Who here has read a state of DevOps report before? All right, who here has just heard the metrics? All right, okay, no one even wants to raise hands. I'm just gonna be done with that, it's fine. Um, no, so we, we the, the state of DevOps report stuff started at Puppet, Dora started at Puppet. Um, I worked with some of this stuff from 2018 on as an author of these reports, talking about engineering efficiency, technology delivery, things like that. So that's where a lot of this experience is coming from. When I left Puppet, I went to CircleCI, where I had this giant data set of what people actually do versus what they wrote down though what they did in a survey. So I was able to look and see were they telling the truth on those surveys and things like that? Because I could actually look at real behavior and I can tell you that there are some sizable discrepancies. Um, if you have ever read one of these reports, these are like the four main metrics that everybody says you should be measuring and this is how you know if your investment in DevOps is working. And today they might say if your investment in platform engineering is working or developer experience tooling or whatever it is that you've named it, still basically the same set of problems. So. This is a page directly out of one of those surveys. And then you have a page that kind of describes how they cluster group everybody and tells you where people are and who's elite and who's not and who's in what tier and all this. And so you start zooming in and you're like, okay, I was running an engineering team in 2022 and we filled out our own thing and we ended up here in this elite 26%, best of the best, we're badass, let's close up shop, let's go home, awesome. But I said I was gonna talk about how you know your efforts are working. So, when you have engineering, there are basically two types of things that everybody cares about. One is metrics of how the product is performing and what's going on. Those are usually more owned by product management, but product engineering sometimes owns them. That's great, nothing wrong with that. Um, and then you have the internal side of things that are going on, whether it's platform engineering again, or dev tooling, or DevX, or whatever. Uh, it's, it could be a lot of things. But the things that you're measured on are basically availability, the cost, the security, and the throughput. Those are basically the things you're measured on as an engineering leader. Uh, and then you can have like sentiment and adoption, which are more product management for the platform. They're like, do other developers like to use your platform? Do they enjoy it? Do they actually use it? Things like that. If this was a much longer talk, I would go in depth on every single one of these, but because it's not, I'm gonna pick the one that I think is actually the weirdest, which is developer productivity. And as an executive, I have to work with developer productivity a lot, and I think about it a lot. And everybody that's ever been a developer says, please don't measure me, I hate it. It sucks. And in some ways it does. But as a leader, I have to say, you're spending how much on payroll and what are we getting for it? So that's why we have these conversations. So like I said, I was running this team in 2022, and we did our own assessment, and we ended up in this huge elite tier because again, we're badass. So do I believe that I was in the top 76%, or I was better than 76% of all organizations at least, and I was in a cluster with the top 25%. I'm not sure I do. Okay, so what's, why is this telling me this? How is this information coming up this way? Oh, I see. For the primary application or service you work on, blah, 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 fill out a whole bunch of other information. Cool. How many people work on more than one thing? Everybody. So when it says for the primary application or service, which one did you think of? The good one or the bad one? The best one or the average one? The one you were happy about today or the one you were mad about today? It doesn't, you know, I don't know, I have no idea. No, I have no way of knowing this. So this is completely based on the person filling out the, the, the survey. It's based on their opinion, sentiment, mood, everything, all the time. That's what a survey is. That's why they work this way. Writing these questions is hard. I'm not trying to invalidate the survey. I have written these surveys. But they are incomplete measurements. They should only help you as a guidepost. 
So, like I said, we were in this elite tier. I was pretty proud of it. I sat down with my TTO, and he's like, do you feel like we're really this good? No. No, I don't. I don't feel elite. Elite's such a cool word. It's like you're the best of the best of the best. You're top gun. You know, you're doing all these things. I'm not elite. Why? Why don't I feel elite? What, what even is elite? Like, let's, let's just back up for a second. If I'm going to be elite at technology delivery, what does that mean I'm going to do? So I, had a, I went and had a long think about this. And I think if I was elite, if my engineering team was elite, it would be all about moving fast with confidence. I can deliver what I want at a very rapid clip, and it's not going to break things. That sounds elite. It also sounds pretty simple, but simple, not straightforward. So the other thing that I always have to do with these metrics was talk to the rest of the executive team, you know, the CFO, the, the COO, CEO, all of those things about what's going on in engineering. The payroll is lopsided in that you're spending usually way more on developers than you are anywhere else in the business. And so you better be able to justify this stuff. So I started thinking about this. Okay, if I'm going to have an audience of executives and I have to have engineers that feel like they can move fast with confidence, how can I solve both these problems at once because I don't like doing more work than I need to? So what are the categories of things I care about? Is the engineering throughput good? Engineering is a lot of times like raw horsepower. Product management's the steering. Engineering is the engine, just, just the accelerator. So that's the way I look at it a lot of times. Is the throughput good? Is the throughput meaningful? This is actually the thing that the exec team cares about. They don't care how fast you're going. They care about, are they getting the thing they asked about? The salesperson cares about the next feature they're trying to close a business on. Um, the CFO might care about the thing that they think is going to tip over the renewal, whatever. So if I add more engineers, will I go faster? And can I prove that? CFO needs this. So I have metric thoughts on a layer quick. Quality, people, throughput. These are the three types of themes. So let's get into throughput measurements. Deployments per week. This is deployment frequency. It comes from the DORA metrics. People are like, hey, how many times do you need to deploy? And the answer is, if you can deploy when your business wants you to, you have achieved this metric, move on. It is unimportant. Does adding more developers mean that you can go faster? Hmm. So if my deploys per week were, let's say, 12 before, I had a new developer, and now I have 13. That's more. That's good, right? Well, no because I have, I have more people and I've only got one more deploy. And that's why you have to normalize this in some way. And so when you hire groups of people or you have attrition or whatever, this number should still say relatively the same or improve or do, you know, show off your efforts of what you're doing to improve throughput. This is my single favorite metric in all of engineering, in case you're curious. So you can see I've mapped it here. Christmas time, no one works. Every other time, people are doing awesome. It's fun. There we are. So I have release. I have PRs per engineer and deployments per engineer. They map correlate. Narrow versus wide work. Narrow is work on the product. Wide is stuff around the product. Wide might be Terraform, might be documentation, might be tests, might be things that don't ship out to the customer. You update monitoring configurations, things like that. What percentage of work do you think is wide versus narrow? In my experience, about 30% of work is narrow. Most people want way more than that if you talk to an executive team. They get very upset when they think that only 30% of their payroll is working on the outbound product. Then you get to people. Are the systems easy to work on? If you go to one service, work on the next service, does the dashboard look the same? Does it deploy the same? Does it install the same? Does it set up the same? Is it written in the same language with the same tool chain? Is it anything the same? Oh my god, no it's not. So we want fungible engineers. I'm an engineering leader. All I've ever wanted was fungible engineering. As an engineer, that is bull crap. There's no such thing as fungible engineers. But I can make things more fungible than they currently are. So, the mythical man month says I can't just add people and things are going to get better. I read it. It's a decent book. It's fine. So, how can I make the systems more able to pick up those changes in people? I can get them easier to work on. More people can work with them. I normalize things. This is very important. This is also the first step you need to take to improve any outcome in the DevOps space of metrics. Like any of those Dora metrics, the fewer variables you have, the better all of them will go. So, this is good stuff. So what percentage of your code is provided by your platform? That's a great metric if you can measure it. How many libraries are being reused? What stuff is not unique in each service? That is so awesome. Not easy to measure. 
I did it anyway. Uh, so we wrote some code to do this, and we started figuring out, hey, 26% of our stuff is covered here, and then later it was 78% because they adopted a new set of libraries that our, our backplane team had written, which was developer enablement. We wrote a whole bunch of stuff, and it went through every Git repo, and it gave you a score of how normalized was it, how in line with it, our standards was it. And when they were out of line, you had a dashboard, and people would be like, well, I don't want it to be at the bottom, so then they start fixing things. Awesome, pressure works. So how quickly are these people productive? We're on people metrics, how quickly are they? I measure the time to their fifth pull request. Because the first one, I added an SSH key to Terraform. The second one, I updated some documentation when I was onboarding. The third one, probably that as well. Fourth one, might be okay, but I'm gonna go to the fifth one just because I think it's probably the right number. It's probably meaningful at that point. And then I come back to deploys per developer per week. If I hired a big group of people, I will actually see the deploys per developer go down for a little bit because they're onboarding new folks. But then I should see it come back up and I should actually have more throughput because all of those people are now productive. And then you get to quality, successful deployments per week. I hope you're measuring this already because if it doesn't work, it's broken. Rollbacks, roll forwards. And then understanding all these changes that are happening. Something breaks upstream, downstream, what's going on for you? So we have release frequency, releases, rollback rate, and success rate. We have a, a metric of layer kick of quality people and throughput. So then I sorted these in my brain because I was trying to make a chart and I wanted to actually be able to explain this to anybody who wasn't me. So I have baseline DevOps metrics. I don't feel elite. I want to move quickly with confidence. I have three themes of metrics. I've gone over nine different metrics of things that you can measure that are beyond the original DORA sets of metrics. If you don't have the original set of DORA metrics, I do recommend collecting them. I do think they're a good starting point. I just think there's so much more beyond them. I think fungibility and understanding changes going on around you, I don't have good metrics for yet. I keep working on it, I keep trying, and I don't have the ones I want yet. I also think that I have categorized some of these in ways that might not make sense to you. You might think normalization is a quality metric and not a throughput metric. Fair enough, we're just labeling. So back to this, we have what you're measured on in engineering, which is the four things on the left side, and you have two product things that are developer sentiment and developer adoption. I want developers to adopt a platform, I want them to enjoy it, but I also need to show that there's an ROI for it to my executive team. That was not supposed to do that. I'm gonna pretend you didn't see it, it's gonna go fine. There. So in summary, what do you want your metrics to tell you? You better figure that out before you start collecting them. What decisions will you make with those metrics? Also important. And can you, correlate, can you do things in your department and see that it correlates to a metric moving? If you intentionally try and increase throughput, throughput, do you see that? Do you measure it? Do you know it? Have you joined with product management to talk about if these metrics are right or wrong for your company or your department? And then deploys per dev per week, like I said, is the first metric I would add after you have a baseline of Dora metrics. Uh, if you want to learn more, I've written lots about this. I've talked about this at length. I have a lot of ROI stuff. I love talking engineering business. I'll be out in the hall or whatever. Um, this Twitter article from 2015 is my favorite developer productivity article I've ever read. So if you haven't ever read Let 1,000 Flowers Bloom, I really recommend it. Anyway, I'm Mike. I work at Flox. Try us out. We just GA'd. Uh, and thank you for having me at DevOps Day LA. Thanks, Chris.